Hi everyone, I am back today with a new sewing tutorial and this is for a vinyl project bag. This type of bag is so perfect for keeping your cross stitch projects organized or any other small like hand sewing crafty projects that you have. And I am so excited about this version because this bag has self binding edges. That means the fabric from the back of the bag actually wraps around to the front and closes all those ugly raw edges and makes it look beautiful and lovely without having to have any sort of separate binding that you have to worry about fussing with and all of that. So I'm actually going to be sharing the measurements for two different size bags. The first one is a larger size and it's good for holding a full size pattern or a cross stitch magazine or whatever you have that you're working from as well as of course your fabric, floss, scissors, anything that you have with you. And the other one is a smaller size for when I'm working on like off of PDF patterns and I just have to keep the fabric and floss and scissors organized. Um, and both of these bag sizes, all the measurements for all of the pieces and supply list, everything you need is going to be in a PDF that you can find over on my website. The PDF is free. You just need to go to my website on the shop page and just go through the little checkout download thing um, and it will be an instant download. You just click the little button and it will download straight to your computer or other device. And the direct link to the PDF download page is in the description box down below. I like to start with a piece of fusible fleece cut to size and then base all the other pieces on that so I don't have to do quite as much measuring. Lay the textured side of the fusible fleece against the back side of your fabric. Fuse into place with your iron according to the fusible fleece directions. Trim the excess fabric away, even with the edges of the fusible fleece. Lay the interfaced piece wrong sides together with the backing fabric and trim the backing piece so it is either 3 fourths to 1 inch larger on all sides. I did this bag with 3 quarters of an inch extra all the way around and 1 inch on the next bag that I made and I think I prefer the 1 inch size. The excess on each side is what will be used to fold over from the back to the front to create the self-bound edges. Add some pens to hold the two pieces together so the excess around each edge remains uniform. If you want your bag to be quilted, now is the time to sew some quilting lines. Add a light to medium weight fusible interfacing to a remaining bit of fabric and cut the two pieces that will be sewn onto the zipper. Again, all of these measurements will be listed out in that PDF. Fold both small pieces in half so the pretty sides are on the outside and press. Place each piece on top of the zipper so the folded edge is parallel with the zipper teeth. Leave enough space for the zipper tab to pass by when zipping and unzipping and sew it into place. I used a zipper foot to do this. Backstitch at the beginning and ending of each seam on this project. Sew both sides onto the zipper this way. Grab your piece of vinyl and lay the zipper unit right sides down on top of it, lining up the long edges. Switch back to a regular presser foot and sew the two together with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're worried about the raw edges of the fabric fraying where it's sewn to the vinyl, you can sew a quick zigzag stitch along the edge. Then flip the fabric and zipper up, smooth the sewn edge with your fingers, and add a top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from where the fabric meets the vinyl. Open the zipper part way and lay the front unit onto the backing piece. Trim the front down to the size of the piece with the fusible fleece. On my bag, it's the bicycle fabric. You can eyeball it like I am here, making sure to not cut that backing layer where the excess is, or use a ruler and rotary cutter to trim it down with exact measurements. The reason the vinyl piece is larger is because I sometimes struggle with sewing vinyl and I want to make sure that if there's any um, warping or if I just have trouble sewing it that my pieces still will end up large enough because it's easier to trim the vinyl piece down later than it is to have to adjust all the backing pieces because the front ended up too small. At this point, you can sew a top stitch all the way around about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the vinyl piece if you want to hold all the layers together. I kind of like to live life on the edge, so I don't bother with that. 
I didn't get this step filmed well on the original bag, so I refilmed it on another one, and that's what I'm showing here. There are a few different ways to make a mitered corner. What I'm showing here is the very first way that I learned. I started by folding the corner over to a point and then over again. Then the straight sides are folded over twice to hide its own raw edges and the raw edges of the bag. Repeat for the other side to create that mitered point at the corner. My miter didn't quite line up, so I'm going to try again, adjusting how much I fold in the corner and how much I fold the sides over for a better match. The second time was actually even further off, so I gave it one more try, and that time it turned out pretty good. Repeat this for all four corners of the bag and for the sides as well. Take it to your sewing machine and stitch near the folded edge to finish off the bag. This method of binding looks so neat and clean and you don't have to worry about fussing with separate binding. And as I mentioned earlier, there are other mitered corner methods you can look up and use if you don't like this particular kind, but the rest of the project still remains the same. Then load up your bag with your newest project and you are ready to start creating. If you're looking for more cross-stitching ideas and inspiration, make sure to check out my floss tube videos. I am actually just starting a new YouTube channel that is going to be a landing zone for all of my cross-stitch content. It's called Stitched with Whitney, which is the same as my Etsy store where I share uh, cross-stitch PDF patterns. Um, but the YouTube channel is going to have my floss tube videos, cross stitch finishings, um, updates for my Etsy store when you can expect new pattern releases, sneak peeks, all of that kind of stuff. And um, the YouTube channel and the Etsy store links will be down below in the video description box along with the PDF that I mentioned earlier that has all of the measurements to make the bags shown in this video. And if you make a project using any of my tutorials or patterns or anything, I would love to see pictures of them. So please share them either on my Facebook page or um, tag me in them on Instagram so I can see them because I would love to see what you're creating. And until next time, happy sewing!